The Global Cyber Threat Environment, Module 7, Understanding the Chinese Mindset. Objectives. Once you have completed the readings, lecture, activity, and assessment, you will be able to describe what is meant by socialism with Chinese characteristics. Describe the historical development of China's sense of cultural superiority. Welcome to Global Cyber Threat Environment, Module 7. The title of this module is Understanding the Chinese Mindset and will be given by our guest lecturer, Dr. Han S. Park. Dr. Park is a retired professor of public and international affairs and the founding director of the Center for the Study of Global Issues, Globus, at the University of Georgia. Dr. Park's area of specialty include political development, globalization, and comparative politics, with an emphasis on East Asian studies. Among his numerous publications are North Korea, the politics of unconventional wisdom and human needs, and political development. He has been deeply involved in a number of peacemaking initiatives with North Korea. Under his leadership, Globus has hosted several Track 2 seminars with participants from North Korea, South Korea, and the United States, most recently in October 2011. Dr. Park was also instrumental in realizing former President Jimmy Carter's trips to Pyongyang in 1994 and 2010, which may well have averted a possible military confrontation between the United States and the DPRK. He has been relentless in his efforts to alleviate the nuclear tension on the Korean Peninsula, making more than 50 trips to North Korea since 1990. His work has been widely praised, and in 2010, Dr. Park received the Gandhi King Akeda Community Builders Award in recognition of his extraordinary global leadership through nonviolence and reconciliation. Past recipients of this award have included former South African President Nelson Mandela, Archbishop Desmond Tutu, and former Israeli Prime Minister Yitzhak Rabin. I just had a segment on North Korea. North Korea comes from a mentality called the siege mentality, but China is also a communist superpower, also using weapons of mass destruction, especially cyber technology. So this is a, where does North Korean, I mean Chinese mindset coming from? It's entirely different from North Korea. China began with the sense of superiority Olden days, China was referred to as Jungo. Jungo is the center of the universe, central state of the world, and surrounded by other foreign countries, communities that the Chinese regarded as being inferior and uh, barbarian, especially culturally barbarian. China has always maintained a culture of Confucianism. They think, still think, and today even more so, Chinese Confucianism is morally superior ideology, superior system of values than any other system of values, cultures in the world. So such a country now became very important, but uh, the economy, because of the failures of communism, the economy got messed up. So in 1976 or 7, another leader came in, that's Deng Xiaoping. Deng Xiaoping promoted the concept of socialism, not just the socialism. Socialism with Chinese characteristics, the term he developed. 
In fact, he looked at Mao's ideology, not a carbon copy of uh, Soviet's uh, Marxist Stalinist uh, doctrine. Deng Xiaoping correctly thought that Mao's ideology was not a communist ideology. It is an ideology that may be termed as developmental nationalism. So Mao, uh, Deng Xiaoping wanted mid-70s on, wanted to cultivate China's economy and make uh, uh, Maoism more developmentally effective ideology. That's Deng Xiaoping's idea of uh, Chinese characteristics, socialism with Chinese characteristics. Now, that has been extremely successful. You know, up until five, six years ago, China became economic superpower, maybe not military superpower, but economic superpower. When you have a solid economy, you can develop weapons of mass destruction, conventional weapons. In fact, China became, during Mao Zedong era, 1954, a nuclear state. A nuclear state. It had a nuclear capability along with all kinds of weapons of mass destruction. And then in the 70s, they developed in the 80s and 90s, uh, they developed uh, the economy. So the economic prosperity and the ways of promoting economic development is subsumed under the uh, concept of socialist, socialism with Chinese characteristics. So China developed economically, militarily, and ideologically quite solid. In the meantime, the Soviet Union perished. So China has become the only superpower in the world representing non-free world. Whereas the United States, after the demise of the Soviet Union, became the sole superpower in the free world. So we have been seeing last five, seven years, U.S.-Chinese polarization of world power structure. Chinese uh, socialism with Chinese characteristics, American participatory democracy have become the bipolar uh, world system. So there, China has always assumed the position of superiority and strength and leadership, unlike North Korea. Now, Xi Jinping's China, today's China, we are in 2018, Xi Jinping's China is yet different, very strong nationalistic system. There is not really communism, socialism being emphasized. It is nationalism, Chinese nationalism. It's consistent with Mao Zedong, Deng Xiaoping, but this Xi Jinping wanted to have much more solid cultural nationalism. Uh, militarily, economically, continue prosperous policies, but cultural uh, socialism that he calls uh, socialism with Chinese characteristics for the new era, this term, the new era. New era is an era where cultural nationalism will prosper. That very cultural nationalism is none other than Confucianism. Today, almost uh, informally, you can say Chinese is a Confucian state, not communist state. And here, cultural nationalism is backbone 
of that nationalism. Here we'll see Chinese developing left and right, but uh, their scientific accomplishments is such that they can develop very rapidly non-conventional weaponry, especially cyber technology. The world will not be surprised if the origination of most cyber uh, attacks coming from China and the Chinese closest ally of North Korea. So these two countries are so important for the analysis, explanation, and prediction of cyber terrorism in the world from now on. So we have seen North Korea and China, different kinds of mindset prompting the expansion of non-conventional weaponry, especially the information technology and uh, cyber intrusion of other countries. Thank you. Quiz question one, true or false? Many of China's national security directives have been in response to its historical sense of cultural inferiority. A, true. B, false. The answer is B, false. Quiz question two, true or false? China is committed to the tenets of socialism that the country inherited from the former Soviet Union. A, true. B, false. The answer is B, false. Activity. Using websites like the CIA's World Factbook, build a presentation on modern day China. Include such facts as the country's population, a breakdown of ethnicities, and its GDP. What industries and natural resources are most prominent in China's economy? Who are the country's largest trading partners? What type of government does China have? Who are the main political power brokers? Include your assessment of what the future holds for China. Do you believe that China's current political system will continue to exist indefinitely? Or is its government weak and susceptible to revolution? <laughs> <laughs>